Hello and welcome to Tantrum House Studio Awesome. I'm Katie. And I'm Ryan. And today we'll be doing a review of Jurassic World, The Legacy of Isla Nublar by Funko Games. <laughs> Jurassic World The Legacy of Isla Nublar is a cooperative game for two to four players and each adventure is about an hour or two hours depending on how long it takes you to learn the new rules of that adventure and get everybody on board uh, to then play the new scenario because each adventure has a new scenario. Yeah, so um, roughly in this each um, adventure is going to kind of follow the general storyline of the movies moving through the franchise. Um, in this game you're going to be taking on the role of one of the characters, usually ones that we've seen in movies, um, and they each have their own special abilities that they bring to the game. Um, you're also going to be um, taking turns using action tokens. Um, those are distributed evenly. If there's an uneven amount, those go into a pool and then can be given to a player um, as needed to help complete missions. Each adventure comes with different unlockables. One of the things that each adventure has is uh, its own set of round cards. And as you play through a scenario, you'll be going through the different round cards and revealing different um, objectives or events that you have to cope with. And at the end of each round, you'll be revealing each of the sector cards. There's a whole line of sector cards. Each one shows you uh, what weather might be happening and also random movement for the herbivores and carnivores. And so you have to kind of look at the board and realize, oh, this herbivore is in danger or this park employee because this carnivore is probably going to move there. Or if there's no herbivores or carnivores nearby, the carnivore might just uh, disappear and show up randomly on the map somewhere else. And it can yes. really mess you up. As the herbivores and carnivores get hurt and other things, um, other events or objectives uh, take place or are missed, you may have crisis tokens that you flip over. Once you get a certain number of crisis tokens that appear, uh, crisis symbols, you lose the game. So yeah. you want to avoid those. So yeah, dinosaurs dying, um, missing objectives or taking too long to complete objectives, or um, obviously losing players <laughs> um, or or people that appear on the board as tokens and not part of the players. Um, all of those things can cause you to t flip over those crisis tokens. Um, in this game, you do a lot of um, rolling dice for dinosaur attacks. Um, you can defend. There are um, little... Um, there are... There are what are they called? Buildings. There's buildings that get put out on the board that have their own extra boards out on the side that are almost like little mini games um, or or little um, puzzles that you have to complete usually during these and that's all dependent completely on the scenarios that are being played. Um, but that's a little bit of a rundown of what the game is like. Um, so let's get into a little bit of our review and how we think about some of these um, aspects to these legacy games. Well, uh, it being a legacy game, it tries really hard, um, like a lot of legacy games, to get you to try different characters and different parts of the game. It, it's very much uh, trying to limit how much you use the same uh, characters for instance. So you can only use characters that an adventure specifically says are available for you to use. Mm -hmm. And if you can't use a character, um, you can use their flip side. They have legacy abilities in contrast to their regular character abilities, which is nice. But even then, you can only use a legacy character so many times before it's no longer available to you. That's not really the way I like to play. I like to find one character and just double down on this character the whole time, all the way through this legacy game. But you can't do that in this because it kind of, uh, the way the franchise worked, um, you know, in the first movie, the park warden dies, the game <laughs> Game Warden. Game Warden. Uh, he dies. I liked yep. that character. I would have liked to have played him all the way through, but that is not how 
it works. Yeah. So um, each of these characters also have like a neat like scratch off abilities um, that that you get as you complete missions and such. And those and you are, can improve them. Yes, and those can be improved. They're, that's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed scratching that off, and you can use the little they've got a little raptor claw that you use that you can scratch those off and reveal this new talent that they have, which is a lot of fun. Um, another thing that they did that made this um, game what I think kind of user friendly is when they introduced new rules, like in the new scenarios, they had a ring of quick rules for referencing. Um, and it is actually on a physical little ring with cards on it. And you just add those onto that ring. Um, we found it the most helpful just to lay them out as cards on the table so that we can reference them for that round, but then adding them to the ring at the end of the scenario so that next time we're familiar with the rules, but we need to quickly check something real fast. There they are in that quick ring of rules. That was interesting. Not seeing that in another game. It was really helpful. I like that. Yeah, I liked that they, you had both the ring of quick reference rules and also like regular legacy games. You're putting a sticker in the main rule book mm -hmm. over the, that section of the rules. And there's other parts where you're applying stickers um, like on at the, the end of each round or the beginning of the next one. You have a budget based on how you did in the last mm -hmm. adventure to then buy uh, fences and roads and such that you can place on the board and those are permanent stickers. And sometimes you have to place you know, new buildings or dinosaurs and that'll be a sticker as well. So it's very important that you're thinking about the placement and how things are going to work and how they're going to interact yeah, as the scenario plays out. What room you're leaving available for additional ones in the future because you don't necessarily know how yeah. many are going to come out. You're not sure. As I say, there's it, within the sectors, there's a lot of different spaces, and you know that some, you know, just like how the sectors kind of interact with each other and the things that kind of come out, um, you end up with like uh, the, like we talked about before, the carnivores. Um, if they get out of their fences, which that happens, that shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, <laughs> um, they will attack the herbivores. Um, so you have to try to keep your dinosaurs separate. The carnivores will attack each other. Um, and that, like I said, that'll cause you to lose the game if you're not careful by losing too many dinosaurs. Um, in each round two, um, or at least in like the first half of the game, there's there's sort of some some changes that happen in some of the later episodes or later adventures. There's some uh, times where you you have a dinosaur card, and for the dinosaurs that are out, you'll flip a card over for one of those rounds, and you may be trying to like tend to a sick dinosaur to keep it alive, or you may be running for your life from the T Rex. You just don't know what's going to happen that round. So that's kind of fun and interesting. Um, as far as like the feel of the game itself, I found it to be pretty intense and g gave me some anxiety of like, oh no, like running from dinosaurs. Um, they weren't. They weren't quite as like, I mean, you could move through a dinosaur space if you really needed to. Um, it wasn't like going to attack you just randomly, but you never quite knew if you were going to be safe or not. And that's where I started feeling like the, oh, the Jurassic Park, like people are running for their lives sort of feel because you may think, oh, I'll go in this building. I'll do this, you know, thing. I'll try to like um, accomplish this task, but maybe the dinosaurs move and then you're not safe in the building. Those dinosaurs can come inside your building and get you, um, just like they do in the movies. So I found that part to be um, really immersive for me, is the feeling of running from these dinosaurs. And like, you're smart enough, you feel like you could try to outsmart them, but um, yeah, sometimes you were surprised and taken off guard. <laughs> the... Um, at the end of each adventure, depending on whether you won or lost, it will have you do different conditions for the next game. So, mm. for example, uh, at some points, you, if you had lost, would gain, uh, or won, you'd gain an herbivore or carnivore, depending on which one you did, mm -hmm. to try to, you know, that sort of rein you in if you're winning too much or help you move ahead if you're um, losing. So that can really influence the later games. And um, 
when you have herbivores, you're trying to keep those safe. But when you have carnivores, you're trying to mitigate them, you know, corral them, but also keep them safe because you don't want to lose because you get crisis tokens. Yeah. Um, and when you're pulling those, it's just random. It just says pull an herbivore or carnivore. Yeah. It doesn't tell you which box to pull. So you might end up pulling one that you're like, oh, this would really be in one of the later movies. But <laughs> I pulled it here at the beginning. Um, so yep. there is that. I, I'm not sure if I'd like it better if it was uh, set for you or random. I guess. Oh, it, it I love improves. the like choice. I feel like our game is so different than somebody else's game because we got to choose. Uh, I mean, we don't know what's in the boxes. They come in these these little boxes. The miniatures come out, um, and so we we pulled one that um, ended up being quite a handful because we didn't know how we were to approach handling this dinosaur. <laughs> And it was very hard, and we I think we lost the next couple of rounds because we just couldn't deal with that dinosaur. We weren't ready for its tactics. Um, and so that was that was interesting. Um, the oh, the each of the at the beginning of each of the adventures, there's like almost like a little comic book given to describe what's the scenarios like for the adventure. So that's fun. Um, at, oh, also at the beginning of each of the scenarios, you get a budget and it's based off what happened in the last game, the choices you made, things you accomplished, things you didn't accomplish, um, and, and, and different things like that. And it tells you how your budget is going to work. But then, um, that is completely separate of whether you won or lost. So you can win and receive receive rewards you could lose and receive rewards and then additionally there's a budget the budget it goes for purchasing things that are consumable items or maybe things that are also permanent um but you can you can invest in extra fences or extra you know to like corral the dinosaurs extra roads you can choose to like start with an additional item card each round um that sort of thing and that can be that can be a game changer on what you decide to spend that on um spend that budget on how much budget you get and how much you know what you choose um and we found that that really makes a difference because we we tried going one way and we said okay that's not working for us maybe we need to try spending our budget over here instead and we're you know and then you're like well maybe it was a balance between the two is what we should have done so um, we've had fun trying to figure out what to spend that that budget on each round. Um, yeah, and if if you do win the adventure, you're more likely to have a larger budget because you're true. more likely to have achieved the secret objectives. They don't tell you. They don't tell you what, what you're, you're going to get, get your budget. Yeah, for. the bonus budget for. Yeah. Until you know you're tallying it. Uh, yeah. So you're just like, well, I hope it was good to save more dinosaurs or more park employees or. You know, yep. have this thing stay alive till the end. And... Yeah, I hope I hope the sacrifice we made to get those visitors out, you know, it's going to pay off for us in the end. <laughs> um, those types of things. And that's really fun. Not knowing, um, I thought, was really fun. Um, there are there are things about this game that can be frustrating. Like, we we you can just hit the um, sort of the, the perfect storm of card draws. Um, that will just kind of mess you up. Uh, we, we did that on our second or third scenario that we played through, um, where we just lost very quickly. Just, I mean, it was just a quick nosedive. And we looked and we're like, we drew like the wrong three cards right in a row. Yeah. <laughs> and well, it just killed us right away. <laughs> it's the peril of playing a cooperative game because the game yeah. is, you aren't playing the other players. No, the it's game's not trying difficult to kill that you. way. The game is trying to be difficult. So it mm. has to have that in it where there is the opportunity to lose, oh, yeah. but sometimes, you know, perfect storm happens and there's nothing you can do about it. And the the problem with it being a legacy game is, well, now you have to you have to eat that loss. Yes. Um, you're not supposed to just um, start over. You have to show like, oh, I was defeated in this adventure. What is the outcome? And then all the consequences the that come with that, even though there wasn't really anything we could have done to, to have changed the way the card draw was. So... Yeah, there there is that aspect to it. I also feel like that makes the adventure more real, though. Because sometimes people just get eaten by dinosaurs in those movies. 
Nothing they could have done. Yeah. But it does it does sort of set you like, oh, I didn't get to experience the whole adventure because I don't know what was going to happen in these round cards. I mean, unless you look at oh, them. Oh, well, you, you, can, look at you can look at them after yeah. you've lost or after you've won. You flip them all over if you make it each round. But Yeah, I think uh, one of the problems with all Legacy games is with having each adventure or scenario be a little different. There's new rules. And with a regular game, you know, you play the first time and one person learns the rules and they kind of relay them to everybody else. And by the time the end of the game, everybody knows the rules. So the next time you play, everybody's on the same footing to play the rules the same because by that point, they all know the same rules. But in here, it's that every time. Every time you're just sort of grasping the rules and you only really learn them by the end of the scenario, depending on how well people are paying attention uh and that's i mean it's the problem with any legacy game so yeah I, th I think it does a pretty good job with um trying to keep the quick reference rules right in front of you and mm -hmm. also you know the sticker in the main rule book so that people have uh the ability to reference the rules but it's just a, a, a lot it's hard to keep it all in mind each scenario oh what's what's new about this one? Oh, i forgot that new rule from last scenario you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. And there are um, differences in the amount of rules. Like, sometimes there's barely any new rules between scenarios. Like, maybe a line or two, and you're like, ah, that's almost nothing. And then sometimes it almost feels like an overhaul of the rules. Um, so that is, there is a lot of rule reading. And so you can't just sit down and play the next scenario. You do have to commit to, like, figuring the rules out for the next round. So there is that. Um, I think overall we did really enjoy playing it. What I will yeah. I will give the the caveat here. We have not actually finished all of the rounds yet. We or the all of the adventures. We still have a few more, so there's still some surprises to come. Um, and I'm excited to see um, what's in store and what we're gonna unlock and what kind of new things we'll run into as we move through the stories. Yeah, I don't personally like legacy games, but as legacy games go, I think this is one of the better ones you're going to play. And it does a pretty good job of uh, keeping true to the story of the IP mm -hmm. and the franchise as you walk through. And that was, I thought they did a great job with that and really immersing you in the movies mm -hmm. um, as a movie-based game. Yeah, so I would say, yes, that's another thing is I, sometimes IP games can be like, we're gonna bank on the IP selling the game and not like the mechanics making the game sell. Um, but I feel like this one really hits well on both of those where it gets, it's got a good IP, but it's also got some good gameplay. So I really enjoyed that. So we both enjoyed this game. If it sounds interesting to you, definitely also check it out. It is Jurassic World, The Legacy of Isla Nublar from Funko Games. Today we're going to be taking a look at Isla Sorna, nope, that's a different <laughs> island. <laughs> Jurassic World, the legacy of Isla Nublar. <laughs> Did it right. High five. <laughs>